it's important to note. So you got RoboCop, you got RoboCop two, you got RoboCop three, where I think there's like ninjas in that one there's and a jetpack. Um, <laughs> there's been a cartoon. There's been a all kinds of stuff. Comic books. And then the there's the reboot, which I didn't watch, so I don't know what there its was relationship. There's a Canadian TV series canonically. Prime Directive. Uh, now uh, they're I don't know what stage they're at. You can fill us in on the details, but they're uh, they they they're gonna do a sequel to the original that ignores all of this other stuff is that that's what i read. well we'll see what's going to happen and we'll see, and, and but I, I have to say that mgm has been very very nice to me since the reboot uh, i i when i got um credited because of the wga um i had to go in and meet with them and i met with the the president of, of mgm and you'll see online as it was confused it's like like ed's got a credit on the 2014 robocop reboot which g- b- b- Micro broke a little part of my heart for a second. Well, it was I, I had nothing to do with it. Right. It, it, it's it's a, it's it, it was sort of nice to get the residuals. And it's because you know? <laughs> just to clarify, <laughs> it's it's because the writers in in basing it on your uh, kind of uh, your 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 characters and your story, they evoked enough of it that arbitration. They took so many pieces of it and used it that in the arbitration process, uh, they they assigned us a fair amount of credit for. Now it. I feel like that's got to feel good because. That's not even like the the like it's it's a it's a it's a maybe like a fifteen year old boy fantasy to be like yeah and then and then they did it without me and it sucked and it's like it's but like that's a that's a proper like mentor wizard fantasy of like it's been thirty years and these kids are trying your craft and like the blood magic gets out of control and. All that. <laughs> And, and, and you're just like, yep, yeah, uh, you're, you're, you're sitting there and you're lazy boy and you're like, oh, I felt a tingle. Someone's trying to do what I did again. <laughs> they, always, they always think they're, they, they're always sure that what they're doing is the right thing. Do you thing. feel like uh, <laughs> maybe you can't or can't talk about what, what stage uh, this new possible straight sequel thing is, but uh, do you feel confident if you went back and tried to do a sequel that you have, like, like that you, like, you know where you're going with that, and you could pull it off. We, we've had we've had a bunch of conversations about this. I was gonna what what happened, which was interesting, was I went in when they were when I when I met them, they'd all just finished this movie, hadn't come out yet, and I, I had a kind of a, it was kind of a weird like how did I feel about this? They were remaking this movie. I was meeting all those people, but I remembered having made a, a couple movies that were traumatic, that they were all probably in shock, and that it had been a very difficult experience, and it really had been. Um, and so I decided to just interview them about that. And I interviewed everyone I could. I interviewed the writer that we got credit from. I, I, I interviewed the president. I interviewed the director. And I would just sit there and say, well, what was that like? And how did that happen? And they sort of remembered that somehow. And when the movie came out, it didn't do that well. I got a call from the president of production saying, why don't you come in here and tell us any RoboCop ideas you have? And I went in and I said, well, you know, there was, I t- started telling him this idea I had. And he said, are you pitching me the original sequel that you guys wrote back in 1988? And I said, well, yeah, kind of. <laughs> and, and he said, oh, okay. And that sort of has set us off in a different direction. Oh, that would be oh, fuck yeah. So we'll see. Baby. And then, <laughs> then, uh, <laughs> are you kidding me? No, but we'll see. We're oh, still, there's a lot of work man. to be done. And then Neil Blomkamp came swooping in when he heard they were going to do it. And <laughs> Look at Rob. He, he, uh, he was going to do it for a while. <laughs> He's uh, oh, he's not. It's a, uh, that's he, a... he, he, he said, well, there's one funny story about it. Then, then it didn't work out. He, they, they, they developed a few scripts, and he had, a bunch of, he had a bunch of different ideas, and I don't think it ever really came together. Uh, but at one point, he decided, and I thought this was interesting. He said, we really got to go and do it like it, it happened right after the first one. That, that it was Verhoeven's it was next movie. Be Verhoeven, it was going to be, he said, I'm going to do it just like Paul Verhoeven. So the other day, I'm sitting with Paul Verhoeven. He said, <laughs> he said yeah, he said he was going to do it just like Paul Verhoeven. I can't quite do Paul's voice. It sounds better. And he said, but he said, I can't do it like Paul Verhoeven anymore. <laughs> oh. He said, because I won't have the same set of circumstances creatively. I don't have, I'm not trying to make a movie for $10 million. I'm not, I don't have John Davis and I don't have Phil Tippett then. I don't have you. I don't have all these people together. And for him, that's as much a part of the creative thing in that moment as anything else. 